In the 1940s, a crooner named Bing Crosby recorded a song that said, a mule is an animal with long, funny ears, kicks up at anything he hears. His back is brawny, but his brain is weak. He's just plain stupid with a stubborn streak. If you're ever in the Yadkin Valley community, a few miles north of Lenore, North Carolina, it would be best if you didn't sing that song. Now, what are these mules' names, Tom? This is Kate, and that's Mandy over here. Farmers up here love their mules. They may own big, brawny tractors, but they also like to spend the morning working their mules, just like Grandpa did. A lot of people's got them, but most people's got them to play with. You could probably buy a tractor for less money. You'd have to pay for a pair of mules like these for the two, you'd have to pay five or six thousand dollars for them. You're not saving no money fooling the one. Now we call the male mule a horse mule. Ah, okay. And a mare, uh, a mare mule, we call her a, a, a mare mule. Yeah. Tom Winkler has lived in the valley for seven decades. His mules don't just pull plows. They're also pollution-free power sources for Tom's shiny stagecoaches. We'll get back to the stagecoaches in a little while. Every year in mid-April, folks gather in a corner of a 100-acre meadow in Caldwell County beside the narrow headwaters of the great Yadkin River. They eat, chat, and tap their feet to the music. But the main event is mules. Mules pulling old-timey double-handled plows. Mules dragging 50-year-old two-wheeled cultivators repainted and oiled up, especially for what the valley folks call plow day. We started with three or four teams, you know, and it's just got bigger and bigger over the years. And we don't want no competition. We don't want no prizes. We just want to have fun. Okay, whoop, whoop. This is a 210 John Deere plow with a Syracuse bottom. It's older than I am. Come up. They're all turning plows. There's a few walk behinds. We call all the plows that you ride on sulky plows. See, you call, you call that your lead mule, that's your off mule. Get up, here. What is it that makes one a lead mule and one a, a follower? I've heard people talk about they work the smartest mule in the lead. And some people got a mule if it's a little taller, they like to have her in the lead. Does a lead mule earn more oats? He ought to, ought to. After plow day is over, big tractors work the land a bit more, then plant a crop of hay. Eight weeks later, the farmers and mules and old machines return for what they call hay day. The valley folks say this field full of mules and old machines remind them of bygone days when farmers always pitched in to help each other rake hay and harvest corn. Heyday also is a time when younger mules get some on-the-job training as they trot alongside their elders. I've always loved to see the mules improve by day, you know, and learn to do what they're supposed to. They enjoy they, work. They like to work. You don't mistreat them. The, the biggest thing that uh, mothers and mules that you got to watch for is a bee's nest. Uh, he's afraid of a hornet or a yellow jacket than he is a bear. Especially for heyday, Tom, Greg, and their friend Stanley Marley repaired an old hay loader that grabs fresh cut hay rakes it up an incline and dumps it into a wagon bed. This strange looking rig was the envy of many a farmer in the 1930s. Tom loves to bring rusty old farm machines back to life. This is the way mine will look on the back. But 
His real passion is building brand new stagecoaches. These scenic views were, were pretty standard on, on the stagecoach. Yeah, you put, a, uh, you put a landscape on one side and an animal on the other side. Hmm. Tom is a stickler for authenticity. 19th century stagecoaches rested on a loop of leather straps to make the ride less jolting. Tom bought seven cowhides to make shock absorbers for his fifth stagecoach. Well, they call them through braces. You got 14 players here, which is 120 feet long. And we, we just took a chalk line and cut the rest of it with a draw knife, like that. Mm. And then just glued it and sewed it together. Can you raise it? You're gonna be able to hook it, buddy. All right. It's a great day when the shiny coach first is lowered onto its chassis. Okay, let's see. That might work. Now, I'm sure everybody wants to know where did you get the name for your stage line? I visited the stage line in Deadwood, South Dakota, and I just said, for the next coach I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put Deadwood, South Dakota. Think I'll get sued? No, uh, no, okay. not a chance. Back up, Kate. Back up, Kate. I always hook your front end first. Okay, guys. Do you mind if I take a ride with you? No, sir. All right. Feeling like the King of England, a passenger takes a seat in the coach. Is Billy Boy in? Okay, babies. Come up, Kate. Man, and away we go clip-clopping into yesteryear. Tom's wife, Marilyn, designed the interior decor, including Old West upholstery, wall covering, and fancy window fringe and drapes. A couple of centuries ago, George Washington rode a coach through North Carolina. I reckon if it's good enough for John Wayne and George Washington, it's a good enough ride for me. Here they are. 